Well, here in the United States, we have a game called football, but I can assure you the majority of the world does not consider what we do in the United States, which has very little to do with feet, football. For most of the world, football, soccer, is known as the beautiful game. And finally, San Francisco has its first professional soccer team, the San Francisco Delta, is here to talk to us about it. Its CEO, Brian Eldress Helmnick, and Roman, the goalie. Welcome. Nice Thank you for you. having us. So, Brian, why the San Francisco Deltas and why now and why is it different from anything that's been tried before? Good question. So I'm, I'm originally born in Bogota, Colombia, and I've been living in the Bay Area for 14 years now. And I love this place. It's my city. I brought my entire family here, but we don't have football. So he said, hey, how, how do we kind of do something? But I had the opportunity to do something in a different way. So, right? so Delta means change. It means difference. We're in the city of change and innovation. So what we're really trying to do is bring the community together, uh, bring the world's game to a city that we now call home. Now, this is now your home for a while. What do you think of San Francisco? This is your first visit. You said something to me that pleased me as someone who's lived in San Francisco for 30 years, that the city was everything you expected and more. Yeah, it's like uh, craziness, happiness. Uh, every district is a different mood and like uh, people are friendly, happy. So like it's exactly what you expect from Europe. You have uh, this image from San Francisco from a happy city and until now like I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> now, I'm married to a European, and, but my, my French is practically non-existent, so I'm not going to botch your name again. But for all your fans, pronounce your name and what is your position with the Deltas? Okay. My name is Romuald Pézère, and I'm the goalkeeper. So, I and mean, he has a nickname, though. What, is the, what do most people call you? Rum. Because, rum. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, because, I can do that rum. Yeah, thanks my parent and Romuald is also not a very common name in, in French. So like uh, since I'm basically never lived in France and I played in Portugal, Germany, Switzerland, Romania, Canada. So like now like my name start to get Romu and now I'm by rum and so everyone can speak. Yeah, well it. I mean after the game at bars, I mean it'll be easy. Just buy rum a drink. We, 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 we get it. Now my husband's father played semi-professional soccer in Spain. And he always said, it's all about the goalkeeper. Is that true? I mean, do these other guys, just, they're there just to help you out, right? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> it's really a team sport. That's why soccer is so nice, because like you never know how the game going to end. And the smallest team can beat the biggest team. And it's always like something new. You're never going to see the same plays. It's always like, it's a really exciting game. Mm -hmm. And that's why in all over the world, it's so, so many people played. You just need a ball and you can play on the street and you can do magic in any moment. Yeah, you know, hearing Rum talk about soccer, and I've heard you, or football, and hearing heard you talk about it, and my father-in-law speak about it, it sounds more like a religion than a sport. Well, it's interesting you say that because I think it, it cuts through a lot of differences that I think we perceive to have, right? I, I grew up moving around every two years and living in different countries, and, and for me, what's beautiful about the sport is that it actually brings a lot of people together. And so, in hearing Rome's story and all the different countries where he's lived, but also if you look at the, the makeup of our players, we got players from Holland, from Spain, from Brazil, from Canada. One of our players is not going to be there um, playing this Saturday because they're going to be playing for the Haitian national team. So mm -hmm. we really kind of bring in a mix that I think is representative not only of the world but of San Francisco. Well, I mean, you, you talk about that. I mean, a lot has been made over the last year or so since it was announced that San Francisco Deltas was going to be home porting, as it were, at Kizar, an historic stadium here in San Francisco. What is it about San Francisco that makes the Deltas a perfect team for us, and vice versa? Yeah, I think I think it's important that the city uh, represents, or sorry, that the club represents the city, and so I think there's a number of factors. One. Uh, nearly 40% of people who live in San Francisco were not born in the United States. It's a very kind of diverse city. There is a lot of divisiveness, unfortunately, that's happening in this country, and I think sports can be a platform that brings a lot mm -hmm. of people together. Well, it's interesting. I worked with Super Bowl 50 a few years ago, just two years ago, and a lot was made of the fact that for the first time an NFL, NFL affiliated uh, group was reaching out to the LGBT community. Yeah. But this was not something that was shocking or surprising for you. I mean, I I've seen the promotional video, I've seen the people that come to your event why it didn't seem like an unusual fit for you to actively go out uh, and look for LGBT fans. So I, I'll talk about it from the business perspective, but I, I think, you know, Romo can talk a little bit more about even from a player perspective. Mm -hmm. But in our mind, we weren't looking for a specific community per se. Mm -hmm. right? I think soccer, as, as, as Romo just said, it can be played anywhere. All you need is a ball. And in countries like Colombia, kids play with bottle caps. Right. So instead of it saying like, oh, we have to now target a certain market, this is 
the world's game. Everybody can play this. Right. If you look at the video where, when our stadium was approved in, in March of 2016, you'll see that we had men, we had women, we had gay, we had straight, we had yeah. old, we had young, all types of accents. And it just it wasn't by design. It just, it just happened right, that right. way. So talk to me a little bit about that, what Brian's talking about, the, the family feel of the Deltas and what goes on in the locker room. What uh, I think the big difference with uh, the San Francisco Deltas and all the cl other clubs I played is like here is you have a family and like we want people to come in the stands but to have fun, to be happy, to make a party of it. And like we don't care who come as long as they are respectful, honest and have fun, mm -hmm. everyone is welcome. And yeah. like at every event we speak with the people, like we want to be like very close from our fan, uh, I hope fan gonna turn friends, like we mm -hmm. want to be close to the city, like when Brian um, spoke to us, he said like we need to make something different, it's not gonna be a usual soccer club, we need that people love us and want to be in the stand and feel affiliated to us, like friends, and we need to be like part of the community. Right. That's why we reach out and we do every event and we try like to bond with the people from San Francisco because we want really San Francisco to be supporting us. Right. Now, you, you said before the cameras went on that uh, Rum had a very specific negotiating tack. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about that because I've met your coach, Mark, yep. correct? And just hearing him talk about it, I mean, it gets you passionate. It makes you feel, as you say, a different, like a religion, a sport. Uh, how did you come to be a player with the Deltas? Uh, yeah, like with the Deltas, it started actually a few years ago. I was playing in first league in Europe, and uh, Mark went scouting some players for his team in Ottawa. And I was walking in the street with my little daughter. We went to the bakery, buy bread, and Mark was sitting there with another player and an agent that I knew. I just joined the table, spoke a little with him, and uh, like a bond created. And like six months later, I was sitting at my agent table and was like resigning for my actual club in the first league. And Mark called just at this moment, and I just asked the agent, I said, Oh, like it's Mark, say hi. And then I said, Okay, ask him if he needs a keeper. And Mark said, Ah, oh, no, first I don't need a keeper, I have some. And then say, I would come. And uh, the agent said, Mark said, okay, but I don't have any money. I just said, tell him, okay, give me what you can, and I come. And it was exactly the same at San Francisco Delta. Yeah, you know, in the United States, that's not considered a great <laughs> negotiating strategy. You know, oh, don't, uh, don't worry about the money. I'll just come. Yeah, because I know Mark is a very <laughs> honest person. He, gonna give, he wants the player to be happy, so he's going to give the maximum that he can. And if he can, he give. He can't. You don't give, so that's why there is no point like to speak five hours or ten hours. It's okay, you can do that. Take it or leave it. Like, no, I'd put a gun on my head. Yeah. I want to work with him. San Francisco was exciting. So I said, Mark, okay, you give me what you can, and I'm there. Yeah. And what was happening behind the scenes is that when we signed Mark as his coach, he's like, okay, I don't want the word to get out just yet. And then he calls me and said, hey, Brian, I've already reached out to six players. I'm like, Mark, you told me you didn't want the word to get out. He said, don't worry. I called six players, and I said, don't ask me where I'm going, but are you coming with me? Yeah. And they all said, I'll go wherever you want to go. And what he told me, he said, Brian, you'll love them. One, because not only are they winners kind of on the field, but more importantly than that, their hearts are bigger than their chests. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I have listened to you speak numerous times, and every time I hear you speak, it reminds me of that old American movie, The Music Man. This is a guy <laughs> who comes to town, and he's beating the band, and you've got your own band. I mean, every time you go, there's people beating yeah. on drums. I think sometimes the people who see your events don't realize till after the fact, well, it's about a soccer team. They yeah. just think it's a circus. Well. I don't know if I'd call it a circus, but it's definitely something where soccer is just one element of it, right? Yes, we're going to be watching a game, but we have wonderful food. At, at the game last weekend, the fans were most excited about the paella that they could, drink, <laughs> they could wash down with Lagunitas beer or Sierra Nevada. So we're doing something that's really, really representative of the city. The VIP area last game had Palestinian food. So do we have the hot dogs and the hamburgers? Yes. But do we doing things that are very authentic to San Francisco and the things that, mm -hmm. that draw us to the city? Absolutely. Yeah. We've only got a couple minutes left. You said that everything that you had heard or read about San Francisco had been fulfilled. What do you think Europeans think of San Francisco? And do they see it as American or distinct from America? It's di distinct. That's what I said to Brian. I said, no, I'm here like a few weeks, a few months, and uh, you don't feel like in the States. You, it's like your own country because you have like everything. You have forests, you have the beach. Every district is different. You go from the Mission to the Castro to downtown, and every time it's like, it's magic. 
What would you like the fans to take away, besides, you know, obviously having you seen you just win a match, <laughs> uh, from a San Francisco Deltas game? Uh, great question. I, I hope that they take away a couple things. One, that I'm a big believer that you can do well and do good at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. So if, you, if you're there in the VIP area eating Palestinian food at a certain game, actually you're eating from La Cocina, which is a nonprofit out of the mission that helps women become kind of food entrepreneurs. If you're in the stands and you buy a hot chocolate, you might have bought it from a Juma youth that helps kind of inner city kids break the cycle of poverty. So what you're seeing that we're doing there is much bigger than just a platform around soccer. You also notice that San Francisco is expensive, but affordability is really important because I don't come from a family of money. Mm -hmm. A third of our stadium are discounted tickets for $20 or less. Well, and you're giving away a bunch of tickets to at-risk youth, correct? Correct. So every, every, for every game, we give away 200 tickets to nonprofit schools and community centers, and we ask our sponsors to join us in the free community ticket program. Well, Rum, Brian, thanks for being with us. I have to tell you, from a personal point of view, now my father-in-law says, wow, you have, <laughs> you have something I understand, football. So thank you for helping me with that. And my hopefully family. he'll be able to tune in, right, because all our games are broadcast on, on Twitter. Twitter. He'll be watching from Spain. Thanks for being with us. All about the beautiful game with Brian and Rum. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching. This is 10%. We'll see you next week.